your understanding of major rigging techniques like armatures, bones, mechanisms, and weight painting is now quite solid. This last section of rigging isn't scary is dedicated to another key tool, shape keys. If you come from another software, you may already know shape keys as morph targets or blend shapes. We'll use shape keys to improve difficult deformations in our rig, as well as for creating a new type of a face rig. So let's dive in. To explain the basics of shape keys, I'll be using a simpler object like Suzanne. And then we'll go back to our character model and apply what we learned in practice. So shape keys are a predefined deformation of your mesh. To create a shape key, we have to go to the data tab, shape keys, and click on the plus button. The first shape key is always called basis, and it represents the default state of the mesh. Shape keys are vertex offsets from this basis, so this default shape is essential. Therefore, as a best practice, you should start working on shape keys when your character is finished. Similar to weight painting, Blender is quite forgiving in this regard, and you may be able to do some changes to your mesh even after you started working on shape keys. But you may run into problems such as your shape keys looking weird or not working at all. So the best practice is finalize the modeling, rigging, and even weight painting, and then do the shape keys. To create our first actual shape key, I'll click the plus button here again. And that gives us key one. I can rename this key by double clicking on it. And here I'm going to stretch the ear. So I'll name it ear stretch. Now, if I go to edit mode, I can select vertices that I want to tweak for this shape key and start moving them around. Using proportional editing can help you achieve more organic deformations. And I can control the fall off by scrolling the mouse wheel here. And I'll stretch this ear on the x-axis. Now, if I go back to object mode, the monkey will be back to its basis shape. That is because value here is set to zero. But if I set it to one, it will assume the shape of my shape key. The next shape I'm going to create is designed to teach you some of the main properties of shape keys. Namely, that shape keys can be combined. When they are combined, they are actually added on top of each other. And finally, that the offset of the vertices that a shape key produces is linear. Let's see what that means. I'll set my ear stretch to zero and create a new shape key. And let's call it ear rotate, because I'll try to rotate this ear. Now I'll go to edit mode again, and I have the vertices selected and proportional editing. So now I'll set the 3D cursor around here and set the pivot point to 3D cursor. And then I'll try to rotate the ear up like this. So now in object mode, if I increase the value of this new shape key, it may kind of look like it's rotating, but really, if we take the position of this vertex and move a bit and record it again, you'll see that this vertex moves in a straight line. So for shape keys, it doesn't matter how you edit your vertices. Once the shape key is established, the vertices will just move linearly from the bases towards the final shape. Now let's cover the mixing of shape keys. We have this ear moving up and then stretching horizontally. So stretching brings it up to here and the other shape keys moves it up to here. So when we blend these together, you may expect that you'll get the average of the two shape keys, but that is not what happens. What happens is that both shape keys are added together. In other words, the linear offset of both shape keys are added together. And this is very important. This is what will enable us to create the face rig later on. And it will be possible to, for example, open the mouth and create a smile at the same time. And the linear nature of shape keys allows us to do cool stuff like going beyond the initial shape key we established. So for example, for the stretch key, I'll need to select it and then I can set max to two. And now I'll be able to stretch this ear even further. This just means that the vertices keep moving along their linear path. We can also set negative values. Let's go to the other shape key and I'll set range min to minus one. And now I can set the value to minus one, which will bring the vertices in the opposite direction. So if the direction of the vertex is like this, they can simply move in the opposite direction like this. Next, I'll cover a couple of tools and scenarios that can be confusing while working with shape keys. Okay, let's set this to zero and let's select the ear stretch. And until now, we edited these vertices 
in edit mode. And as soon as I switch to edit mode, the mesh will assume the shape of the selected shape key. So if I select another one, the mesh will switch to this shape. Now, shape keys are very organic, so you may wish to sculpt them. But if you switch to sculpt mode with this ear stretch selected and set to zero, first you'll see the basis shape. And if you try to sculpt, absolutely nothing will happen. That is because value needs to be set to one in order to sculpt this shape. Now I can use my sculpt tools to edit this shape. So now in sculpt mode, I can also activate another shape key and keep sculpting. It's important to understand that what you are editing is the selected shape key only. Having another shape active, which is mixing with the one you're editing, may not be what you want. So you may want to set this to zero. But in other cases, you may actually want to see how these two shapes will mix together. And then having both shapes active can be useful. In edit mode, you will only see the active shape unless you select another shape that you want to mix and click on this button. Now I can go to the stretch key and edit it in edit mode and see how it will mix with another shape. Okay, I'm not sure if we'll use these techniques exactly, but I want to give them to you because they can be useful and they can cause confusion. And I believe this will be more than enough to start applying shape keys in practice. I'll just quickly create a new shape key, set value to one, go to sculpt mode, and let's name it smile, and shape the mouth of Suzanne as a smile. And I think you'll begin to see how we can use shape keys for facial animation. But before that, we'll cover another common use of shape keys, and that is improving the deformations of difficult areas like elbows, knees, and even shoulders.